Ah, uh, yes, under the bench plants. Ah. This episode is brought to you by Audible. So we are in the tropical room in the conservatory here at Wave Hill. And this is what I remember because I, I had this like foggy memory of under the bench plants, which are like my favorite. And this is what I remember, the syngoniums under the bench. It's like my favorite part of all these conservatories. Like it, there is a couple under the bench plants in the succulent room that we saw at Wave Hill, but you can maybe easily control them. But look, even here, one of the, one of the succulents actually got in. This is probably like a whale fin or something along those lines. Even one of the succulents made its way over here. They're like, heck, I'm gonna go over to the foliage plants. That's where it's at. <laughs> it's like the largest one that you see. Oh, this room makes me happy. So we got a lot of, a lot of things to see here. Um, this is a cissus. I think a cissus discolor or it might be a Cissus Javana. I don't remember what the um, current scientific name is. And then you have Dancing Bones Cactus right here. And it seems like has gotten a lot of sun. Hattiori, I believe this is. Oh, and how about this? But this Hoya is actually in bloom. Look at, I might even try to smell it. Oh yeah, very powdery. See that? So beautiful. It looks like it had some past blooms on it as well, and this one's going to bloom. And then you see you have a beautiful philodendron gloriosum right here. Look at the satiny leaves of this. Over here, a little bit sun scorched, but this is a rap Ripsalis pilocarpa. And I actually just noticed that this was blooming in my bathroom. So this one is not yet in bloom. And I'm rubbing up right now against this uh, bird's nest fern or this Asplenium nidus. And back here, you see a lot of earth stars. These are Cryptanthus. And you'll see a philodendron pink princess. So they, they're not all species here. They actually have some cultivars. And over to the left here is a philodendron varicosum, which has stolen a lot of people's hearts as well in the uh, houseplant trade. If I look under the gloriosum leaf, I almost missed the silver sword or philodendron hastatum. And I think that this one is called, um, it's a type of Tradescantia, I believe. And it's a Moses in the cradle is I think the common name of this one. So if you look over here, you could see the fuzzy petioles. This is a philodendron squamiferum. And back here, probably one of the best versions of this that I've seen is this uh, Alocasia frydeck. I have tried to grow this in my house on multiple occasions, but eventually it would just succumb to spider mites. This one looks exquisite. This is a plant for aroid lovers. So this is philodendron rugosum. It's also called the, the pigskin philodendron. So you could see that it has this texture to the leaves and you know does look like a, a pigskin or a football, if you will, that kind of texture. This one is an interesting one and I'm blanking on the scientific name. Ugh, it starts with an M. But this is a type of philodendron that has these really bulbous petioles, and it holds a lot of uh, water storage in here, and uh, pretty exquisite. Now, I thought some of the succulents wouldn't be here, but you could see that they actually have a bunch of snake plants in here, so I'm not sure what determines some snake plants going in the uh, succulent area and some growing here, but maybe 
they're splitting the difference for safety or maybe there's just more room in here. So that's interesting to see that they have it. And I do want to say that there is a ficus deltoidea over in the corner. So maybe if we could swing back around here and work our ways past the uh, Marantas and the Japortia. You see that? It has little figs. It's cute. And then look at this uh, Vicii right here. It has uh, a bloom on it, so the spadix and the spathe is out. All right, let's work our way back over here. So we're looking at an H. cananthus here, zebra basket vine. I believe this is now H. cananthus marmorata. And you can see some of the flowers here. Not as vibrant as a lipstick plant, but it is in the same genus. This is by far one of my favorite plants. I have this growing in my biopod. I do not know if it's still growing in my biopod. This is gorgeous. This is a Metanilla cetifolia. And I love how it cascades down. It has these like semi-succulent leaves. Not how you would really think of a metanilla because you think of those like larger leaves with big pink flowers. And this one looks like it's semi-bleached or has some type of variegation in it, which is pretty cool. So they have some ant plants here, Miramakota and Hydnophytum. So these are plants that develop a special commensal relationship with ants. So even some of these holes that you see here in the caudex, that's likely where some ants will start to go in. And oftentimes you'll see like just this nice maze where ants could eventually live in there and protect the plant. Here's Lepismiums. So this is a, another great jungle cactus. Lepismium warmingianum. Here's a tenanthi right here. This is a tenanthi labersiana. And here's another ripsalis. And look, you have one little bloom starting right here. Beautiful growth structure on this. Ludicia discolor. I found out my chicken really loves to eat this. <laughs> um, this is one of the terrestrial orchids right here. And you see actually some se several orchids, which I'm not going to be able to tell you which one is which. This one is a type of dendrobium. All right, so we have some peperomia here. So I was just giving the gardener in the succulent room some flack because I was like, where are all your peperomias? There's some really good succulent peperomias, but they have them here. So they have redeemed themselves. So you see, see we have some variegated ones and here's the characteristic peperomia flower right here. I'm just curious if this has any scent. No, I don't smell anything right now. Um, peperomia tetragona but it's also planted in with a, another type of peperomia. So this one's a separate type of peperomia, it looks like. Or it's a different kind of variation. This is much thicker than this. It looks like this is the same top. That's interesting. This looks like a peperomia glabella, or it could be an orba. This looks like a peperoma polybotria, but it's got a really different growth structure. It looks like a cutting, so I'm not going to touch that. This is Peperomia prostrata. Very, people are very fond of this plant. And then you have some really impressive Anthuriums right here. Anthurium splendidum right here. And this is an Anthurium magnificum. And that's an Anthurium superbum right here. All these are getting a little bleached, so that's something to think about when you're in the greenhouse. Okay. Let's see what we have in here. This is a typical metanilla. 
So when I showed that Metanilla cetifolia, and then this one is Metanilla magnifica. Magnifica is one that you could get. Cetifolia is a little bit harder to get your hands on. And it looks like there's another philodendron back here, but again, it's a uh, cultivar. And then you have uh, Schefflera right here, but again, kind of bright yellow hue, so it's probably a specific cultivar. It's so funny because I'm blanking on some of these names, but uh, I will get the name for you on this. Oh, God, Makoyana. I can't remember the, the name, but it's, it's one of those plants that has a really beautiful green on top and a purple on the bottom. And again, one of those fabulous under the bench plants. And plants like this, this is a Hoffmania. Really love this plant. Super difficult to grow. It looks like these are some of the cuttings that they're using behind here. Very challenging plant. Some Tradescantias right here. I totally miss this plant, but you could see the little curly cue of this uh, anthurium right here. And yeah, see this Hoya. This looks like a Hoya macrophylla, but again, with this light that comes in, you could see how it starts to really bleach the leaves. So some of these tropical plants are really sensitive. And it's probably why you actually see them huddling under the bench. You'll see a lot of the ferns. You'll see this guy, which is actually a campferia. This is a type of ginger. And look at this guy. This is another type of aroid. It looks like schismatoglossus, Philippine giant. So I think they are comfortable with the fact that some of these are going to be under the bench plants. And interesting ones, nonetheless, because I don't see, I don't see that one growing up here on top. Oh, this one looks like Eleocarpus grandiflorus. Look at how pretty. Lily of the Valley tree. That's gorgeous. I love how they just dangle like that. Here's another thick-stemmed philodendron, and look at the petioles on this. Philodendron aplanatum. I think this is a type of gloomia with the red undersides. And the red undersides of the leaves may actually signal to pollinators that, hey, even though the flowers may or may not be out, here, the flowers are out here, may say, hey, this is gonna be a really good yummy flower. Uh, when the flowers are out. So it's always interesting to see the kind of red on the undersides of the leaves. Something so like the, the yeah, so the red underneath the leaves might actually be a signal for when this plant is not flowering to tell and signal a pollinator like, hey, this could actually have some really good pollen and nectar here for you. Well, there's a lot to see here and maybe too much in, in one day, but when Wave Hill is back open, you should definitely make a visit if you happen to be in New York. It's just an exquisite place, and there's 28 acres to see, and as you can see, a really full, lush conservatory. All right, bye guys. I love getting approached by partners that I already use, and Audible is one of those examples. Now, not only can you download my audiobook, how to Make a Plant Love You, Cultivate Green Space in Your Home and Heart, and you can listen to me read while you pot plants, but you can also download thousands of other titles. Now, right now, I'm listening to my friend Wade's audiobook, Magdalena, River of Dreams, which is a robust listen of Columbia's history through the most iconic river. 
Now, I bought this as a hard copy, but it's a big book. And when I'm heading upstate on the bus, I prefer not to lug it around. Plus, I get motion sickness on the bus, so I could just pop in my headphones and listen to Wade's story through Audible. The other book I'm listening to now is called The Introvert Advantage because some of my friends are introverts and I want to better understand them so we can have a stronger relationship. Now there are of course many great planty titles I could recommend, including The Hidden Half of Nature, The Microbial Roots of Life and Health, and The Orchid Thief, a true story of beauty and obsession. And they become great audio companions for when you're gardening or going for a walk or even feeding the chickens. I hear you girls. Hello. Hello, girlies. Come on down, come on down. Yeah, there you go, girls. There you go. Lastly, Audible launched Audible Plus. And with that membership, you could get full unlimited access to their Plus catalog, which is filled with select originals, audiobooks, and podcasts. So if you're interested in expanding your universe with some good listens, then head over to this URL or text this code to start a free 30-day trial. The URL and code will also be in the description below. Look at this cute little plant growing here. Look at this cute little pilea just growing out of the, uh, the edge here. It's so adorable. I love when plants go rogue. <laughs>